Hello again everyone, welcome back. It is uh, Tuesday evening in the workshop, uh, and I believe it's the first part of December, December 4th, Tuesday, December 4th, and I need to try to make some progress on the guitar kit. And I've done the one video, and the only camera I'm going to use is my overhead, as I mentioned in some of the earlier videos I've added camera here and I'm going to check a couple of things we're going to do a couple of things in this particular video and I've got just as you can see I've got just the neck and then I've got some other things here I told you we were going to change the headstock so I've made myself a little template I had a couple of different sizes just to kind of get some measurements and stuff going because once we draw this and cut there's no going back so I printed this and then or step back before I printed this I pulled it up on the computer snapped a picture of it with my phone sent it over and got the okay uh, that's the shape the Gibson mustache if you want to call it that um, kind of has that look to it so that's the the shape we are going with for the headstock and what I'm going to do is I'm going to find center I'm going to mark center here and I'm just going to use my calipers for that um, got to get a new battery the display is getting pretty dim there but uh, I think it'll work for this particular task so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my calipers get a measurement all the way across I've got let's see 85 85.2 and I'm in uh, millimeters it, it doesn't really matter um, so 85.2 and those of you that can do math in your head can make fun of me for pulling up my calculator but I don't want to screw this up so uh, let's see 85.2 we're going to divide that in half go with 42.6 so I'm going to set my caliper to roughly that as close as I can. You could use uh, a, a ruler, but I, I think you get a lot closer of a measure. I, I hope I'm not back too far and cutting you out of the, the camera here. Um, trying to get to 42.6 on my calipers here and they're a little bit touchy so you but the if you take your time and there we go so I'm gonna lock it in there's a little screw in the top I'm at 42.6 which is where we needed to be and that'll be locked in so what I'm gonna do is I'll just take the caliper and I've got a mechanical pencil because it's pretty fine line there and I'll make a mark right at the point like so and then if we come from the other side that should hit right on the mark so that's a dead center there um, need to probably extend that down a little bit I've got yeah so our template I do need to extend that down a little bit I'm not exactly sure maybe I can use the oh, flip it around use this kind of like a t-square maybe flat right up against the headstock here and because we're kind of assuming that the headstock is top of the headstock is square as well but 
I'm going to take that risk, I think. All right, let me close that because I don't think we're going to need that for a minute anyway. So I've marked our center point. I've got the template here that I've cut out. I did a few different sizes, as you can see, uh, kind of big to small, and this is the one that I landed on. Um, I believe it's around 80 millimeters, so those of you that might be following along here, uh, that 80 millimeters, I think, was pretty spot on. I'm just going to get a piece of tape so I can tape my template in place and then trace it and try to things never work right when you're trying to film and all that but I'm going to try to do this I have to be able to see but I, I want you to be able to see as well so but I, I really need to get this lined up properly where I want it and I need to be able to see because I really I want it as high up on the headstock as possible. I'm going to cut off as little material as absolutely possible. So I think I'm going to go with that right there. So can you see that's pretty well laid out dead center. What I've done is I put the center of the the little, if, if you want to call it a mustache, um, but I put this center lined it up with the mark that I made for center and it's very 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 close and then I lined up each of these top pieces with the very top of the headstock so what I'm gonna do and I'm I may block you I'm gonna try not to but no promises I might end up blocking you here I am gonna throw a little piece of tape right here try to keep my template for moving around and this is painters tape so it's not going to leave any kind of mark or anything on the wood so we got to do a little bit of sanding anyway so I'm not overly worried about it um, but this is just regular paper if I'd have thought about it I could have printed it on a little heavier cardstock or something but I think I can get the job done um, I just may have to block you for a minute and then I'll show you what I've done here. We can fine tune it as well once once it's all kind of cut out and all of that. Um, So yeah, I think that's going to work really well there. And the other nice thing about putting the tape on here is you can fold this back and kind of see what you ended up with. So I'll kind of straighten up a few of my a couple of my lines here. And so I think, let me kind of hold you up here. Hopefully I got you in the camera there. Again, I'm using the new camera, so hopefully that turns out okay for you. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Do I like it or did I get kind of turned? Bring, yeah, I think I got the template turned just a touch. I think I need to bring it down a little bit. Let me measure because I it doesn't look right to me. I gotta re redo the I gotta reposition and, and redo it I think. Don't think I got it exactly where I wanted to be. So let's just measure. 
We've got nine point forty five and yeah we're not even even close. I missed it by quite a bit you can see there. So hmm <laughs> hmm. Let's see. Alright, well at least we didn't cut it, right? So let's see if I can leave this lined up. Let me take because I kind of like the position of that side. There's our 9.45. So that's pretty spot on there. Let's uh, make a mark here. Need another hand. One of you guys want to hold that for me? And I can mark it or mark it for me and while I hold it you could really use another hand there all right let me put that mark there line reline up my center line and see if we can line back up where we were on that side because I'm pretty happy with how that side was I'm just not too happy with this side. So let me redraw it. Now helps if I get the right view on it here. Lining my center up. Okay, so I'm on where I need to be on that side, and I think this side needs to come down about like so. So let me stick my tape back down. I think that's going to give us a, a little better shape. So let me redraw some marks here. And we'll see how if I like the look of that any better. I think I will actually. So the top line is we're we're gonna ignore that. See if I can find an eraser and get rid of that top line maybe without making too big of a mess. It might not erase very well. Alright, this might give you a little better look. I'm going to get look, get a good straight on look at it and see if I like it any better. Yeah, I think that's... I'll do it without the template there so I can really take a good look at it. Um, yeah, I'll give you a look at... Look at that. I think, I think we did... I think I did a, a little better job the second time there. So I think I'm going to reinforce the marks just a little bit. Turn my calipers off because they're already dead enough. Trip to the store and get a battery. And I hate going to the store this time of year because they're so crowded and everything with all the Christmas stuff. Shopping and being all caught up in that stuff. Um, my wife and I, we are doing a lot of projects for people this year as opposed to buying a bunch of stuff for people. Um, putting a lot of thought into gift ideas and of course I, those of you that kind of follow the channel, I do a lot of painting and uh, I always do for the kids 
my kids, my sister's kids, and if I have time, my mom and dad and sister and other people, if I have time, and do uh, paintings for them. So I've got two two paintings left to do. Uh, so I, I might have been in good shape there. And then this is the other main thing that needs to be done before Christmas. So I'm going to put a push on for that. I do like that shape. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause you really quick and then snap a picture of this with my phone, send it over, get the approval I need to move on with this and then once I have the approval to go ahead and do it I'm going to grab the saw and I'll probably go ahead and cut this out and I'm going to do that off camera because the saw is loud and all that kind of stuff so follow the line leave just barely leave the lines and then come back in with files and sandpaper and stuff and clean everything up so uh, you can always take more off it's it once you take it off it it you can't put it back on so um, that's kind of my approach in doing any of this so carefully I think I'm going to do that uh, get that cut out and then I'll bring you back I want to show you how I'm, I need to test these tuners, make sure they're going to work, kind of get some sort of an idea. Um, I can just kind of show you ro really quickly, but I'm going to mess with this a little bit, I think, tonight as well. Kind of think how I want to do this, because I'm going to have to fill some holes and drill some holes, both. Because these tuners, and, and these came off of a Taylor guitar uh, my tailor that I upgraded tuners on so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these and they're they feel like they're going to fit and be just fine but uh, somehow they've got this on the on the top part right here and I I'll try to zoom in maybe bring this up this way they've got this uh, instead of the screw like you screw holes in the back of the headstock here the tuners that came with the kit have a little kick out on the side of the tuner and a screw goes in there so they pre-drilled these holes and I, I almost wish they wouldn't do that with the kit because it really um, limits you know they, they almost force you to use that kind of tuner unless you do what we're going to do and I'm going to fill this with some glue we're, we're going to put a little bit of stain on this anyway so uh, we can hide it so that you won't be able to tell but I'm going to use some glue and sawdust uh, and fill that I've got some light light uh, wood sawdust uh, I try to save that stuff but I need to figure out there's this little nub I don't I know what you call that um, but this will measure it with the calipers and then find a drill bit that's the same size maybe even just a fraction of a, of a thousandth of an inch or something smaller so we can get that we almost press fit that into the hole uh, but we have to drill these holes so I have to figure out how to position the tuner mark the spot where I can drill the hole so I'm going to work on that a little bit tonight as well but um, I'll come back to that. Um, I decided if you watch the intro video not to use the tuners that came with the kit because the post had like this post you can see I, I'm putting pressure side to side and there's no movement in the post. If I were to go grab one of the other tuners that came with the kit there's all kinds of movement and play and that's just me wiggling that in my hand there's no movement in that post the ones that came in the kit uh, have all kinds of movement and I'm, I'm afraid that would affect the guitar being able to stay in tune so I'm going to switch and use I already had these so it's not costing anybody anything that's going to be my contribution to this project along with my time of course 
but as far as I'm going to just contribute those. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause the camera right now. I'm going to make sure I'm happy with this, get a couple of opinions. I'm going to go and ask my wife what she thinks. I'm going to snap a photo and send that over and get approval for sure from the, the person that I'm doing this for. And once everybody buys off on that, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut it out and I'll bring you back in and show you that result. And then we'll need to do some cleanup. I need to do some sanding around this back edge of the, the neck here in this curl or this curve of the neck here needs to be sanded and, and shaped a little better. There needs to be some cleanup in here as well. So let me pause, get that taken care of, and then I will be back with you in just a little bit. Okay, welcome back. Let me show you how we ended up. Not too bad, actually. Hopefully that gives you a good look at it. I stayed just outside the lines there. I have some cleanup to do with uh, some sandpaper and files. Files and then sandpaper. Get it in the right order. But clean that up and that's going to look pretty nice. Alright, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. That's the major surgery work for the guitar. That's all the cutting really that we need to do. Everything else as far as the kit is concerned is good to go. We'll have a little, I mean some sanding and finish and all of that, but as far as major modifications, that's the really the only modification that we're going to make. So let me show you I think what I'm going to tackle next is trying to figure out how to fit these tuners because that's going to take a little bit of brain power there but the first thing I'm going to do is pull this over and show you what I did here um, I took these were the pieces I cut off actually that one probably came off of that side but it, regardless, I, I took these and I made a pile of sawdust. It's the same wood, so the color will match really well. And I'm going to fill these holes. And I may have to do this a couple of times because sometimes the, when you fill like that, it shrinks up and then you got to go back and refill it again. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take got some Q-tips or Q-tips. I said that in the other video too. I was I did a video on filling these holes that get stripped out with with toothpicks and breaking them off. Put you put glue in around the toothpick and you break it off and you, and then you put your screws back in. And and I think in a couple places in that video I called these things Q-tips. Um, these are not Q-tips. These are toothpicks. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a toothpick and use that, put a little pile of glue out here and kind of mix a paste and fill in. See how deep we are. So we're go we've got a little bit of filling to do so we may have to make some more sawdust but we've got wood to do that. So let me go ahead, I'm just going to, let me find something And squirt squirt out some glue. I think I'm just going to use this plastic here for the glue. That way, don't ruin my notebook. Might need to write something. You never know. Uh, let's see here. And again, my glue of choice, Type Bond Original, wood glue. So that's what I'm using. And I'm just going to squirt some out here on this plastic. That's probably way more than we'll ever need. But 
wood glue is only a couple of bucks, so I'm not too concerned about it. All right, let's uh, mix up a little bit of this dust, and we're going to put the the top part of the headstock here is going to be the dark color of the guitar body, the front side, or the the what you see when you when you look at the top side of the headstock the back side the neck and this part and then the sides what i'm thinking is we're going to take the the dark color here we'll take that same color but mix it with mix the stain that we're going to use here with a, a lot more oil to uh, and I'll use some Danish oil or something to mix it, uh, thin it down like a 50-50 mix or something like that. So we get a light tone of the same color. Uh, but th this will be lighter here. Um, so it'll, it'll cover a little bit, ev even if this shows just a tad. Uh, we're going to stain over it, so it, it should end up not too bad so I think I'm just gonna grab some of this on my fingers and I'm just gonna go for it uh, you can tell I haven't done this this I'm just doing it on camera here so we'll see how it goes I'm gonna pull some of the glue make a make mix our sawdust in with the glue make a paste Mix it up pretty well. I've seen people do this kind of thing and I've, I've done it on other projects, not for this specific application, but um, I have done this kind of thing before. But it's just the wood glue and the sawdust is all it is. So I'm just going to take that on the toothpick and I'm going to pick a hole here and do my best to fill it up. Like I said this uh, has a tendency where you'll see this a lot is around uh, if people are doing like inlay work they'll go back and fill around the inlay but I think I'm gonna just leave it like that um, let me kind of come up your way a little bit you can see that we'll see how it dries um, but we need to do a little sanding anyway so I'm, I'm not too concerned about about it being raised a little bit all right that's uh, done for the moment we just need to let that dry and then um, we can come back and sand it see how it looks uh, what I'm hoping is the wood glue doesn't yellow too much but I think once we sand it I, it's going to be fine it's starting to really stiffen up already so it's not going to be too long before we can hit it with some sandpaper and see how it looks. Got some 400 or something laying around I'm sure that we can hit it with but I think that's going to be fine as small as those holes were um, you're not going to see much. We may have to like I said it may shrink to the point where we have to hit it again if, if we can see it but we'll kind of cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> 